Evening everyone, hope you're all well. Been a good day today. Um, been to just to catch up really, let you know what, what you've got to, to come. I've uh, got quite a lot of content built up on the phone really, so it'll be a little while before my next trip out. Wait for it, wait for it. There we are. Well, that's what we was waiting for anyway, that. <laughs> and to let you know what we've been up to today. Had a nice walk along the Albert Embankment, which is obviously opposite to the Houses of Parliament, down to Lambeth, to the old church of St Mary at Lambeth, which is no longer a church. Um, it is a garden museum, the world's first garden museum. And the fact that it became a garden museum is the only reason that church survived. So, and it's a lovely place to go. Um, Two people really, really fought hard to save it, as you'll find out more in the story as we get along to the church. That's if you, it's your cup of tea. If you like gardening, um, the Tudors, the Berlins, all that kind of stuff, there'll be a little bit of something there for everyone, really. And um, a history of gardening as well, including two of England's most famous historical gardeners, the Tradescants. Um, after that, because they had an, oh, and also a bell tower climb with lovely views across the river. And you very faintly, I don't know if it picked it up, but you very faintly hear Big Ben chiming from the Lambeth Church Bell, uh, Lambeth Church Bell Tower. Um, yeah, anyway, after we finished at the Garden Museum, which was once St Mary's Lambeth, and we come out of the church, have a churchyard tour, because I know quite a few people like those, and there's some interesting people buried amongst the, the or mentioned amongst the tombstones in that churchyard. Uh, from there we go to the Imperial War Museum. We don't cover the whole museum today. I just wanted to get a couple of little bits of particular footage for two days time as you will see. Um, but unfortunately the museum's changed a lot and not for the better either. They've taken away the bomb shelter experience and the World War I trench experience is a shadow of its former self. And my battery's about to go any second so I'll finish this one but that's basically what you've got to come. Hope you're all going to enjoy it. See you soon. Sorry about that ladies and gents. The wire on my power bank broke so I wasn't able to charge up. But we're all sorted now and good to go for the next time. I wanted to do this little add-on piece because one of my main reasons for going to St Mary's Church at Lambeth was to see this grave or this gravestone or tombstone which marks the grave of Elizabeth Howard Boleyn. Countess of Wiltshire, mother of Anne Boleyn and grandmother of Queen Elizabeth I. Now, Thomas Boleyn, Anne's father, he is buried at Hever, but Elizabeth, as you can see with her name, Howard mentioned here, I wonder why it doesn't say Boleyn, it's interesting, considering she died two years after the fall of Anne Boleyn and that Thomas Boleyn had been well known to shove his daughter forward, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? But yeah, anyway, he's buried at Hever and she is buried at Lambeth. Mostly because the Howards, there's a few Howards buried at Lambeth here. Um, one of its former chapels was known as the Howard Family Chapel. As I say in my videos of the church, it was where the, uh, one of the childhood homes of Catherine Howard. The Boleyns and Howards were connected. Catherine Howard and Anne Boleyn were, a, were cousins of sorts. I'm not sure first or second, but yeah, they were cousins. Anyway, back to Elizabeth Boleyn, the mother of Anne Boleyn. Now, following her death at Bain, near Baynard's Castle, London, three days earlier, so Elizabeth died on the 4th of April, 1538, three days earlier, Elizabeth Boleyn, nee Howard, Countess of Wiltshire, a mother of the late Queen Anne Boleyn, was buried at St Mary's Church at Lambeth, just next to Lambeth, Lambeth Palace, 
on the 7th of April 1538. John Hussey recorded her funeral procession in a letter to Lady Lyle, and this is what he says. My Lady Wiltshire was buried at Lambeth on the 7th. She was conveyed from a house beside Baynard's Castle by barge to Lambeth at night, with torches burning and four bannies, which is his word for banners, set out of all four quarters of the barge. The witch barge was covered with black and white cross. It doesn't say with a black and white cross, it says with black and white cross. So that probably the coffin would have been covered over with a pall with a black and white cross is probably what he means. But yeah, interesting lady, Elizabeth Boleyn. As I say, mother to Anne Boleyn and wife to Thomas Boleyn. And she lost two of her children. She didn't just lose Anne when Anne was executed. Because don't forget Anne's brother, George, he went that way as well. And the shame that would have fallen onto this family because Anne and George were, believe, were accused, not believed, accused of having an incestuous relationship and all sorts, basically Henry VIII, they trumped up all charges to get rid of Anne Boleyn. But yeah, this is Anne Boleyn's mother. Now, this portrait here is attributed, not proven, but attributed to possibly being a early portrait of Elizabeth Howard, the young Elizabeth Howard. So, if it is, we are looking at the only likeness of Elizabeth from her own lifetime. So have a look at this picture of her and maybe some of Anne Boleyn and see, and see maybe what you think. Elizabeth was an interesting lady, as I say. Um, the rumour of the time, and still now, is that she was first the mistress of Henry VIII. Then her daughter Mary was the next mistress. That didn't last long. And then Anne Boleyn was the, the, the great mistress. But unlike her sister Mary, Anne Boleyn wouldn't give out or let out until there was a ring on her finger. So Henry VIII married her, didn't get what he wanted, and we all know how that one ended. But yeah, so if the rumour is true, Henry VIII had mother and both daughters. So yeah, that's a, <laughs> a little interesting snippet of that. But as I say, um, Elizabeth Howard, a fascinating lady and a great survivoress really. She died two years after her daughter, so she lived through that, unfortunately for her. But earlier, her family had also survived the fall of Richard III, who they'd supported. And then they came into sort of their own in the Tudor court, because Elizabeth here was first lady-in-waiting to Elizabeth of York, wife to Henry VII, who was mother of Henry VIII, and then she was lady-in-waiting to Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife. Interesting and awkward scenario, that one, because when you consider Elizabeth's daughter Anne overthrew Catherine of Aragon. So, yeah, that must have been quite awkward, mustn't it? But as I say, they lived through tumultuous times, and this is one lady that certainly did. And she's buried far away from her husband, for whatever reasons. And many said at the time, when Thomas Boleyn died, that the only mourners at his funeral were the ghosts of his children. He wasn't very well liked. Our next port of call and main reason for going somewhere was the Imperial War Museum and this Victoria Cross. George Drury, VC, he was a recipient of the VC and a local man to me. Mentioned in the War Memorial, he has his own tablet actually, at the foot of East Dam Central Park War Memorial. Anyone that's seen my ongoing series, the East Ham series, you will have seen that war memorial. But I went to the museum specifically today to see and photograph this medal, uh, which is a real honour to be able to do. Because most of the commemorations around the First World War happen on the 11th of November. And since I started the page, that's what I've done. But this year I want it to be a bit different. We will still have, of course, our 11th of November commemorations. But I wanted to do something for the date the war started, the First World War, which is in two days' time. So that was my main port of call for going to the museum, because you will be seeing more of George again, and a little bit of this medal in video form, and of his story. Interestingly enough, his story is not linked personally, but um, he died... 
uh, one of my ancestors, Joseph Wallenish Jr., who was killed at Gallipoli in 1915. Which, fascinatingly enough, George was at. And George's act of bravery at Gallipoli is what got him his VC, what made him a VC recipient. So it's an interesting little link there that my ancestor and George were at the, the same place at the same time. It does make you wonder if they would have known each other. So in our commemoration video we will of course be starting first with George Drury who is a national hero. And then you're going to have the everyday hero. My ancestor Joseph Wongness, I've got pictures. Um, there is a death certificate. I think I've even got his birth certificate I believe. When I've done the family history and that. And he was only 29 when he was killed at Gallipoli. And all we know is that he died of wounds. And when his mum received the telegram... He was the youngest son and apparently her baby. They were very close. He was the baby of the family. And she collapsed five days afterwards and died of a stroke. Uh, it does. Uh, pretty kind of obvious what happened. I mean, the shock of it probably was too much for the poor woman. She was 59 years old and she'd worked hard all her life. And I think that probably finished her off. But yeah. And our other thing that we went to. Well, not went there but we did see at the Imperial War Museum, a fascinating piece of social history from our own lifetimes, many of us. This is a piece of the Berlin Wall that was taken down in 1989. And this is outside the museum, located in its grounds. And I wasn't able to video it because the battery was running low and I needed to film the exterior shots for St Mary's at Lambeth so I could put the video together. But I took this picture, a couple of pictures of it actually. Yeah, this is the Berlin Wall. So many of you will actually remember, I was five when this happened, a vague, vague remembrance of it being on the news, I do remember it on the news when the people, because the people were pulling the wall down and then a big slab of it came down, that I remember, um, but not really the events and things and like that, but I do remember when, when it came down as a five year old boy, probably one of my earlier memories, and many of you will have more vivid memories of it. Yeah, that's what we what we've been up to today basically. The grave of Elizabeth Boleyn, the Tradescants of course, which aren't included in this video, but you will see them in the St Mary's at Lambeth one. George Drury and the Berlin Wall. So keep an eye out on the page. You will be seeing the commemoration for the First World War in two days' time without foul and the other stuff I'll put on as and when I can. Hope you're going to enjoy the content and find it interesting. Thanks for watching all. See you soon.